<laughs> let's drink till we're drunk as you drink. Call upon the gods to steady you. Nah. Yeah, let's drink. Let's have a good old drink. Uh, I, I'm doing the croc thing. I'm, I'm doing what croc did in the emperor's new group. <laughs>what can I say about this game that the majority of people didn't already say? I'm not gonna lie, this was honest to god one of the hardest reviews to make because I didn't even know where to start with this. So Baldur's Gate 3 came out in 2023 and I have been avoiding this game since the beginning of time. The only footage I have seen of this game prior to its release was the... the, the bear sex. Look, I, I was scrolling through Twitter, all right? But the point I'm trying to make here is I did not want to hype myself up for this game because I have been shot too many times by companies I trusted. Hell, even when the game was released, I still waited. But to be fair, I was busy watching reruns of Kenan and Kel. I don't care what anyone says, this show still holds up. So with that being said, after multiple 10 out of 10s across the board and also winning game of the fucking year, here we are. So in this game, you play as Tav, but I called him Ricky Rowe in my playthrough, so that is why I'm calling him for the rest of the video. So in this game, you play as Ricky Rowe as he wakes up in a Mind Flare ship with the biggest hangover imaginable, until we find out that those headaches were actually caused by these tadpoles those squid people shoved inside of us. And during this time, we meet a band of colorful characters that have the same tadpole problem as us as we join together on a quest to find a cure. So now Ricky's goal is to get rid of his tadpole no matter what, while also dealing with his urges as well. There is something about her. It would be wonderful to kill her. A perfect tragedy. Now when you first start up the game, it is recommended to not do the Dark Urge path as your first playthrough. That is what they tell you. Do not do that. Do not do the Dark Urge path first. So now that Ricky Roll is taking the Dark Urge path, I was now off on my grand adventure. But first, I need a volunteer with nerves of steel and the heart of a lion. Who will it be? Well, I wonder who it's going to be. Who? A bloodthirsty rush of fury engulfs oh, of you. Of course. You want to butcher the crowd, women and children oh, alike, shit. and soak in their innards. It is glorious. That with the cloud makeup makes us you. worse. This game was so engaging for how serious and how goofy this game could be depending on your choices in and out of combat. It can go from being an episode of Game of Thrones to an episode of Scooby-Doo in a second. Do your worst, you cheating bastard. Oh god, I'm cheese. The story is broken up into three acts, and it's still insane to me just how much shit they put into this game. It honestly felt overwhelming at times, because I'm the type of player that likes to do everything on my first playthrough, until I realized that it's basically impossible to do everything in this game in one run. That being said, I did do the majority of the quest, so I will give myself a pound back for doing a good job. Yep, good job, Michael. Good job. But a good story wouldn't be complete without some compelling characters, right? And my god, are the characters in this game fucking phenomenal. The entire cast for this game is extremely well written, and none of them feel like an afterthought. Unless you don't talk to them, and then they die in a later act. <laughs> With a cast this good, it's so hard to pick a favorite. But the three characters I did use the most on my team were Shadowheart, Karlak, and Astarian. All right, let's start off with God's favorite princess. Shadowheart arguably has the best development in the entire game. And what I love the most about her character is that depending on your interactions and relationship with her, she can end up going down a path of light or the path of darkness. <laughs> What's wrong with me? And the same can be said for Astarian. I was already a fan of Neil Nubon when he played Heisenberg in Resident Evil Village. But after seeing him play Astarian, I 100% understand why this man won best performance at the Game Awards. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd wield. I mean... <laughs> I assume there's some device controlling these things, so we find that. Uh, murder some people and, um... 
<laughs> Look, I'm not a details person, all right? But turning up and causing chaos has worked for us so far. He embodies a Starian. He is now one of the greatest companion characters in video game history. He is up there with Garrus from the Mass Effect series, Morrigan from the Dragon Age series, and of course, Chelsea from the That's a Raven video game. <laughs> and as for Karlak, I'll just keep it a buck. She was the character I romanced in the game. You still like me, right? I fucking love you. I'm much more than like you. You think about <laughs> Well, you see, about that, I don't <laughs> I mean, I just had a, I just had a I just had a dance with Will. And you know, he was kinda he was kinda put in the moves, you know. I mean, like once I saw him do the Dougie, that was it, you know. It was kinda just a rap for me. But I was I fucking love you, bitch. Replaying this game and romancing another character is going to be so fucking hard because of how much I fell in love with Carlac. Remember that list I made a year back on the top ten females in video games? Yeah, you can just slider in there her story is so damn sad but her character is the polar opposite i wouldn't have given her the time of day but even i needed a laugh once in a while <laughs> what can i say the bitch had good jokes <laughs> <laughs> she is so upbeat while being this aggressive barbarian, but she's not one dimensional whatsoever. There are so many layers to her character, especially with what she is going through, and romancing her honestly made her quest even more impactful and urgent. And I'm not gonna lie, her and Ricky were so adorable that I always had this goofy ass smile each time they interacted. God, I love that. Clown makeup and everything. God. And know that you made We look like a crazy ass couple. We look crazy as hell. There were two moments in the game that emotionally broke me, and that was the ending to Astarian's companion quest and the ending to Karlak's companion quest. Both of those moments brought me to emotional heights that I have never felt in a video game since The Witcher 3. That's my reward for everything I suffered. That's why I survived 10 years of torment. The fighting, the claws, the loneliness. <laughs> the fucking loneliness. This hurts so, so I much. Could rot because the person I trusted the most gave me away to the devil. It's moments like those quests that make me appreciate video games so much. Because not only did I go through this journey with them, I played with these characters for over 100 hours. There are a lot of shows and movies out there that can immerse you into their world and get you invested into their characters. But when it comes to a video game, you can live with these characters and even step into their shoes. And you are with them for a long time. This is a long ass game. <laughs> It took me over a hundred hours to beat this game because I didn't want to miss anything. And even then, I still miss shit. <laughs> Not food. Climb. Uh, 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 I'm, 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 I'm gonna just go. But since it is a video game, I think it's time for us to talk about the gameplay. The gameplay in Baldur's Gate 3 is very much turn-based combat. But the thing is, I have played Dungeons & Dragons. I have not only been a player in D&D, I have also been a DM for a campaign that's currently on hiatus. Look, the reason we stopped the campaign was because my players all sucked. I don't know what else to tell you. I rolled the dice and I somehow got a natural zero on good players, especially this one guy who wanted to play a robot. I said yes to it, but in my head I was like, really, a robot? Who are you trying to roleplay my guy? Fucking Karen from SpongeBob. You trying to be Plankton's wife? <laughs> I hope they never watch this video. So when it comes to the gameplay, I was already familiar with this combat system because I already played D&D 5th Edition. And I can honestly say I loved how they implemented 5th Edition in this game. Everything in this game felt familiar to me. Now, I don't know how easy this combat system will be for players who aren't familiar with D&D, but if you want my advice, if you want something easy, play Barbarian. If you want something difficult, play 
bard because as we all know bards are the hardest class in the game <laughs> i think the biggest highlight gameplay wise is how creative you can get with every encounter and fight you can take out enemies in so many unique ways in this game or you can be like your boy <laughs> and find ways to avoid fights entirely Infuse a stone me. Again! Yep, again, let's take another drink. <laughs> let's drink till we're drunk as you drink. Call upon the gods to steady you. Nah, yeah, let's drink. <laughs> let's have a good old drink. <laughs> uh, I'm doing the croc thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing what croc did in the emperor's new group. <laughs> Oh god, he might pop. Oh god, time to go. Oh god! Oh my god, he actually is gonna pop. Oh my god, that's fucking disgusting. And did I mention just how gorgeous this game looks? The fact that this game is so big while still looking this good is insane to me. I played this shit on my 4K monitor and this rivals some of the PS5 games that I praise for being visually stunning. And I played this on my PC. Honestly, a game like this is meant for the PC because the modding community is going to go nuts for this game. And I'm not really a fan of the medieval fantasy style soundtracks with the exception of Lord of the Rings, but I was just playing through this game and next thing I know I'm singing down by the river without even realizing it. The soundtrack for this game is perfect. I wouldn't say I would crank these tracks in my car with the boys, unless it's Raphael's theme. Hell, hell, hell has its wars. Hell, hell. Effect in the cause, curtain falls, but hold your applause. But even then, I think all the tracks are beautifully laid out in this game. I'm going to say it right now. Baldur's Gate 3 is one of those games that has now changed the landscape for video games. Very few games have done that. Mario, Mortal Kombat, The Last of Us, Silent Hill, Wii Sports. I'm not even joking. This game is now the pillar of what an RPG should be. And I hope this game opens the eyes of many developers who have just been fine with giving us the same shit for years because that is not going to cut it anymore. The audience has spoken. We want good games that are finished. No DLC needed. I'm going to say something controversial and this might age poorly. And honestly, I hope I'm wrong. Grand Theft Auto 6 will not live up to the hype. Blame this game, not me! So with all that said, Baldur's Gate 3 gave us a phenomenal story, amazingly well-written characters, and a crazy amount of creative freedom. Now get out of our way, I need another drink. Okay. <sighs> so with that being said, my final verdict for Baldur's Gate 3 is the Platinum. Seal of Approval. Yeah! <laughs>